Hello everybody, Martin here and I hope you enjoyed the series so far. In today's lesson we will finally jump from Blender to Substance Painter and sculpt some details on the surface of the helmet. So what is the plan here? Actually what I want is to export only the two parts of the helmet we laid out together, the helmet and the crest holder. The spiral itself I actually want to only bake as a normal information for the final helmet because it's a very cool technique and I really want to show you how to do it. So let's start off by lowering this render subdivisions to 1 so that we see the same thing later in render as we see it in the viewport. This is just to avoid any unnecessary problems, not really that important but I like to do it anyway. Next let's export our low poly mesh, for that I simply just select the helmet and the crest holder and export it as OBJ with the apply modifiers option unchecked. This way after the export the sub D modifiers will not be applied. That takes care of our low poly mesh that we will be using for the texturing in Substance Painter. Now what I want to do is to export a high poly version of this mesh into which I will include the spiral too. This high poly detail we will then bake onto the low poly model in Painter. Before you do anything now make sure you duplicate your meshes and have a backup of it before we now start messing around with them. This way I still have my original low poly mesh but I also have new meshes to which I added this HP suffix to know it's my high poly. Then let's select the spiral, apply a mirroring modifier to it so that it's on both sides of the helmet and add a boolean modifier to it choosing the high poly helmet model as the object. Afterwards here switch to union and apply. This way we have created a single mesh from the two. This is very important for the baking process of the normal map. If we didn't join these two Painter would not take the spiral detail into consideration when baking the surface details. Good, we don't actually have to worry about the UVs in this case. All we need is to select the crest holder along with this new helmet mesh, export it again as OBJ and check apply modifiers this time. Then name it the same as your low poly mesh only with the HP suffix. And with that switch to Substance Painter and we will start adding some height to it. To start of the project hit file new here set the resolution to 2K and OpenGL format and in the select menu find your low poly model. Hit OK and just checking the two texture sets this seems fine and in the texture set settings there is this baking menu. In the baking dialog all you need is to plug this high definition mesh so find it open it and then let's not worry about anything else just hit bake the calcidian helmet texture set. After the process is done you can see we have baked all the surface detail of the high poly mesh onto our low poly mesh. At some areas of the helmet this is a little bit visible especially at these corners here for example. Uh, this all really depends on how detailed you want your helmet to be. If I wanted this to be a real hero asset where I knew I wanted some very close-up shots on the helmet I would go with a higher polygon version even for this base mesh. However I intended this helmet mostly for shots like these where some imperfections don't really matter. Besides I don't want to bog down my scenes with insane amount of detail making them unrenderable later after adding one simple helmet. So yeah that's my little bit drawn out explanation. You can see down here we have some red message telling us we weren't really able to bake ID map but since we have not used IDs that's quite okay and you can simply just right mouse button on it and clear it. Cool next step surface details. This is a step I simply love every time it comes to it and I'm using it for each and every armor asset I create. Later it really adds to the look of the textures especially after we apply some smart materials. Basically this is like sculpting directly in Painter however much easier and faster. Those who already tried my CG Boost Substance Painter launchpad will know exactly what I'm talking about. 
So start off by adding a fill layer and on it, leave only the high channel activated with some low negative number like negative 0.01, depending on how deep you want your scratches to be. Then create a black mask and in the alphas menu search for paint. Paint you ask? Yes, paint. I know, this does look like some sort of paint strokes, but actually that's only when you use them in their default form. What you can do though is to paint on this mask with white color, then hit X to paint with black color, remove some portion, then hit X again and add. You can go all around your helmet and start adding what looks like pretty convincing scratches. Fast, easy, convenient, a technique I use for most of my models. By the way, if you want to know a lot more about my Substance Painter techniques, I already mentioned my Substance Painter Launchpad course for CG Boost, and there I really dive deep into basics of this software, as well as some intermediate and advanced techniques. So if you want to learn Painter from the ground up, definitely head over to CG Boost and give it a try. All right, shameless plug is over, and here you can see me using the Dirt One brush which is good for adding some edge damage on areas like these, where two geometries meet. To make your strokes straight, you can hold down shift and that way create these lines with them. And actually, if the resolution of the details is not enough for you, you can always raise it up here. That's the procedural beauty of substance, being able to go up and down with the texture size at any time. Then, when we continue painting details with this Dirt 1 brush and even Dirt 2 brush, these are slightly different and I like switching between the two to make these rougher areas and painting over some slashes with it is good as well. Continue adding and removing and that's basically the whole process. Choose various paint alphas to create different scratches and then when you're done with it, you can maybe clean everything up with dirt brush set to dark color to not have the surface so very damaged. Now we can actually use more than one of these height layers. So duplicate this one. Here, clear the mask so it doesn't have the same details as the one below. Don't forget to reset your brush to be the basic hard brush. And on this new height layer, let's actually add some decorative wave pattern right underneath the edge here. For this, I often like to use this alpha, which you can download from the project files in the description of this video. You know what, we will do it properly this time. So while you have the mask selected, go here to the effects menu and add a paint layer. Nothing changes, we'll basically still just paint on this mask, but instead of painting directly on it, you will paint on this special layer, which you can later edit, subtract from, and generally have more freedom to mess with it, which is always good. One last thing, click on the fill layer here, and instead of negative number now, change this height value to about 0.04 to have our shape protrude above the surface instead of going below it. Use white color and you can also employ some X mirroring to make your life easier. Okay, maybe not your life, but you will definitely get this done sooner with it. And now start stamping. It may take a bit of time and good positioning to make this nice. Remember, you can always use two very important shortcuts, control and right mouse button and sliding to the left and right makes your brush smaller or larger. And then control, left mouse button and up and down movement rotates it. You can see I'm using it a lot here. So stamp, rotate, stamp, rotate, stamp, rotate and go around the whole helmet like this. Shift right mouse button of course rotates the lighting of the scene. So use that to see regions on the back better. You may have to change the size for these back ones to be able to finish up the painting with the mirroring on without overlapping the shapes. You can see that it took me several tries here. Put the layer below the first one. And now it's actually D time to add a second paint layer. And that's because we will be subtracting from what we painted, which is the whole reason behind using these paint layers. 
So on the second one, use this basic soft brush and with black color, trace over these ugly top edges to make them disappear. You can see I'm actually using this lazy mouse for this to make my painting a bit steadier. You can activate it by hitting D key. Finally, above all this, we can add a new effect called blur. So go to this menu, find filter and choose blur from here. Now this of course is too much, but we can lower the value and yeah, I think this helps to smooth our shapes a little. We can also add a sharpen filter above the blur filter. This way you will add back some detail to it. But now the shapes will still be a bit more organic than how they appeared originally. And finally, to randomize the form of the waves a tiny bit, you can add a filter called warp below the blur effect. You can see it randomizes the shapes now, but this is of course too much. So we will go lower with this intensity value to something like 0.1. Actually, let me also lower this sharpening here to 0.1 as well. To change the randomization, you can play around with this directional warp here, turning it on, of course, and then messing with this angle. At this point, I'm still thinking about whether to use the sharpening on the wave pattern at all, and then I decided to just hide it. Oh, and definitely don't forget to add some scratches to this crest holder as well. With that, we will actually be exporting what I call a pre-normal map, which we will then re-import and use in the baking process to get details from. Go to the export textures menu, deactivate the face material in this export texture window. We don't need that one. Uh, we want just a helmet. My setup for this pass is very basic. If we now go to this configuration tab, you can see that I have a normal preset here with just one output map, which is this normal OpenGL that I dragged here and set it to take data from the RGB channel. Then I just use the texture set naming expression underscore pre-normal. Back in the export tab, just set where you want your pre-normal map to be exported. I usually create a folder called pre in my texture folder but it's of course up to you and your personal folder structure, if you have any, you should. With that exported, you just bring the normal map into the shelf, set it as texture, import it into the project, and then once it appears in your project's textures, you can simply plug it in here into the normal texture set socket. And with that, we have not only our spiral in the normal map information, but also the height detail that we painted previously. Which means I can hide both these height layers and the height information is still present. And now we will be baking all our required maps from the normal map that we just created. So open up the baking menu. Don't forget to deactivate the normal map baking here, since we've just plugged in our normal map. Also, IDs won't be necessary and then just hit bake. At the end of this process, we have everything we need to use some nice smart materials, but that we will have a look at next time. And as always, if you like this tutorial, consider supporting the project over at Patreon, where you can download all of the assets for my tutorials, along with some other bonuses, models, materials and much more. But with that, it's time for me to say goodbye and I hope to see you next time, my friends, when we will actually start texturing.